Well, it's great to be with you, Aunt Francis and Peggy. Um, this is a chance for us to catch up on some family stories. Where do you want us to face? Well, you can just talking to you right there. Yep. So we can just oh. you can just tell me some of the stories as you think about them. And the nice part is it's just we're visiting. So you it know something horrible? What? I had a stroke on my memory. Uh, and I've forgotten an awful lot. Well, we'll see what's there, and we'll remember what we do, and that's that's what makes it fun. Mm -hmm. But uh, we thought it'd be great to catch some of these memories with you mm -hmm. and with Peggy, and mm -hmm. and have them for other people to enjoy. Well, One of the things I thought we'd start with is when did you and Uncle Ken meet? Do you remember you and Uncle Ken? Yes. When you met? I was um, a friend of mine, Alan Budgeon, and I was telling he said they need a new girl at the office. So I went, and Ken was head of the uh, bond department, and I got hired to do the the uh, telephone and the uh, oh, putting things in the, the uh, filing, mm -hmm. filing. Yeah, the, in the in the drawers. Mm -hmm. So many people were out of work. Sure. And that's one reason why I was going to high school at Danforth Tech, and uh, I heard uh, Alan, my friend of mine told me that he needed a girl at the office, and so I applied and got it. Mm -hmm. And uh, So it was very valuable to get a job at that point. Yes. Yes. And I was there for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And eventually, um, they got rid of all the last people they'd hired, mm -hmm. about seven or eight people, and I was one of them. Mm -hmm. And after that, I just stayed home and helped my mother and uh, look after the house and one thing or another. Sure. And Ken sort of moved down to the beaches quite a bit. And so he wouldn't have, he used to come all the way from the northwest end of Toronto down to the south east end. Mm -hmm. uh, he used to come down every night and we'd go for a walk. Wow. And then he'd go home on the streetcar and then finally he moved down to the east end. He had a, got an apartment. And uh, I think he was hoping I'd get married to him then, but he didn't say anything, and I was leaving it for him. <laughs> <laughs> How long do you think there was between the time you thought you might get married and he finally popped the question? Oh, he had asked me to marry him before. Okay. But uh, he didn't say when. Ah. <laughs> and uh, I thought, well, he's moving right here. He really wants to get married. But I wasn't going to say to him, are you wanting to get married? <laughs> I wasn't going to say that. Yeah. But finally, we did. Wow. And uh, yeah, and he had a house in Scarborough. And he uh, did he sing in the opera at that time? Um, I can't remember. He was in the opera company for a while. And I can't remember when. A tenor or a bass or a baritone? He was a tenor. tenor? Baritone. Yeah. Oh, baritone was he? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, he used to go in the opera. And my mom said they had two little dogs, Winky and Snooky. The picture of one of them is up on the wall there okay. that my mom drew. And the little dogs used to go to the opera with my mom, and she'd take them in, and they'd sit up on the... Now, I don't know if this was practices, maybe, rather yeah. than the actual performance. And they would sit up on a little chair and be wow. there, too, and she'd watch them. Yeah, and he also played the grand piano. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, once we came along, he stopped doing all of that, and I never heard him play a piano or sing. Interesting. He would whistle. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I had the piano once, and I said, you know, do you want to play something on this? And he said, oh, no, not right now, thanks. Wow. <laughs> How do you beat that? Yeah. Well, you, you know, he no. got a grand piano because he thought this would be great, and it didn't work out that well. No. Yeah. He really sat there and would practice and not be happy with it. Yeah. But he liked singing. Yeah. And I finally got rid of the grand piano. Right. Do you remember when he got the piano? Vaguely. <laughs> yeah. Could very well didn't be, keep it I, that I've long. I've forgotten that story. Uh -huh. I don't remember. We moved to a, an apartment and they had to carry that piano. It was a great big grand piano up the stairs and I felt terrible. I hadn't thought about it and then having to move it. And it was after that that Ken got rid of it. Mm -hmm. He didn't play it in the, the apartment that much. And we moved. I didn't like being in the city so we moved out to Scarborough. So you were a persuasive person in your <laughs> yeah. early days. Yeah, well, Ken liked it there, too. Sure. And uh, eventually we moved out to the country. We had 19 acres, mm -hmm. and it was very nice. Wow. First of all, Ken built a house. Mm -hmm. 
and it was on Colonel Danforth Road. Mm -hmm. And we lived there for a little while, and I said, Ken, this isn't a big enough place for the children to play. We need some land. Yeah. Poor Ken, he worked so hard on this house. It was a lovely house. Anyway, we sold it and moved. Hmm. And uh, we got 19 acres with the beach property and the golf course on the north side of us, a farm on the west side of us. Sure. And the lake that we had, the beach property. Yeah. Behind us, a steep hill. <laughs> right. Very nice. So, yeah. perfect place. Yes, it was great. Yeah. And, and the what kids was have... the book that you had there? Five Acres and what was it called? An independent five acres in independence, uh -huh, but we had 19 acres, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they talked to your grandfather, yeah, that they always referred to as James A. James A. Right about mm -hmm. this, and mm -hmm. they said that they thought they'd like to get some goats, yes. And so, one afternoon, he showed up with yeah. two goats, two goats unexpectedly, yeah. but with great delight around our household, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we didn't have a, um, a goat house or anything, but we. We staked them out, yeah. but that was the beginning of a wonderful time with yes. goats. Yes, we had a lot of fun with the goats. Mm -hmm. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. Peggy, what are some of your memories of your dad and uh, stories that were kind of the, the quintessential? Well, pen? he always was entertaining us with his puns, absolutely. Okay, sure. We knew he could come up with a good one. Mm -hmm. After he built the house at, uh, on Danforth Trail, mm -hmm. and they bought Road. Danforth Road, and we moved to uh, West Rouge, he then uh, left driving into Toronto to Montreal mm -hmm. Trust and worked for Johns Manville. Oh, okay. And he was an industrial engineer for mm -hmm. Johns Manville mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, very much enjoyed it. He, wow. They kept him on for, uh, I think, almost a year after retirement wow. to finish a project uh, and knowing that he really didn't want to retire. So sure. He didn't retire until he was um, 66 or 67. Mm -hmm. Wow. And you see, Johns Manville took about 10 minutes to get to work. Sure, much closer. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, he was doing bonds and other uh, and, financial and instruments. So to go into the industrial engineering, he must have had some other skills. He was in charge skills. of the, a group of men and making sure that they... I, I think with the math again, he was always very good at math. So it was he managing... He with anything. That's and great. they sent him to New York for mm -hmm. some uh, courses and okay. training. Very good. Did he go to university? Um, no. Okay, so self-taught in terms of the, the world of finance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Um, did he enjoy going to work each day? Was it something yes, he loved? Yes, he did. Yeah. yeah. But unfortunately, he got asbestosis there. Mm. John's Manville were making shingles of asbestos. And both Ken and Cameron. Cameron, I remember him standing up by the goat house with a cement block in his hands doing exercises. Ah. Uh. And the cement block was made of John's Manville. Okay. And so both Cameron and Ken got asbestosis, mm -hmm. yeah. and it killed them, both yeah. of them. Very hard. Mm -hmm. Daddy lived to a good old age. Yes, mm -hmm. that's right. Cameron was at much younger when mm -hmm. he died. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Lovely. Do you remember what school you went to for public uh, school or high you school? You something? I didn't go to grade school. Wow. I started, and I was having trouble with my vision. Sure. I had trouble off and on. And I couldn't see the blackboard, so my mother just kept me home. So you were one of the early homeschoolers then? Yeah, well, I wasn't a homeschooler, I was just at home. Okay. And my mother had a heart condition, at least she thought she did. The doctor finally said it was fine, but she was a very emotional person. And if you get emotional, you're Sure, hurt. yeah. And uh, so I stayed home and, and sort of looked after doing housework and things like that for her. Mm -hmm. And I didn't go to grade school at all. Hmm. I didn't go to school. I started but left because I couldn't see the blackboard. Okay. And um, then I went to Danforth Tech and took an art course. And half the day was spent in regular education. Mm -hmm. And then the other half in art. Right. So you inherited your father's love of... Uh, was it, did you also do drawing or painting? Or? Yes, I did. And so did my grandson. Okay. So that carried its on through? And trade on. Yeah. As well, Frank, her father had a lot of books. Oh, okay. And he, did Frank uh, educate you at home a little? Mm -hmm. You said around the talking. table. He yes. talked to me at the table. Mm -hmm. And I got a lot of education from him. Very good. And not, um, he wasn't figuring he was educating me. He was just telling me interesting things. Okay. <laughs> Very good. I, and you learned many things as a result of that. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. 
Yeah. So what memories do you have of uh, either uh, Great Grandpa Hugh Cowan or uh, Granny Jean I, I Eloise knew her Cowan? Wood. Than Reverend Hugh. Sure. What are your memories of Granny Cowan? Or, or they were great. Yeah. And I I had two sister, three sisters in law. They had early nine children in the family. Sure. And a number of brothers in law. I think I had six brothers in law. They had quite a clan. They yeah. started off with a big group. Yeah. And uh, as far as Granny Cowan and uh, Jean Eloise Wood as she was originally, mm -hmm. uh, what are your memories of her in terms she of her person great. personality? I really enjoyed her. Mm -hmm. okay. What are some of your memories of uh, of um, the extended family with Granny Cowan? What are your memories of Granny uh -huh. Cowan? I was saying to Peggy. Oh, Granny yeah, Cowan? Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. Always very correct, very matriarchally. Mm -hmm. um, and a good mother. And even when she was in the um, nursing home mm -hmm. out in Hamilton. Beansville, was it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jean and Charlie took me out to, to, they drove me out to visit because uh, um, Dom was busy in school then and they, I had took the two little girls, uh, Jody and Kim, my two daughters, and they were both about three years old. And she was absolutely delighted to see them. And mm -hmm. again, it was as if she was sitting in her chair, hmm. wriggly. At home at Oakwood, yep. she regularly sat up in her bed, mm -hmm. and she was a person there nodding and talking yep. the same way, even though she was there in the nursing home. Yeah. And I didn't realize at the time, but I understand that she had Alzheimer's as well. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But she handled that visit beautifully. Isn't that great? Yeah. And uh, I just remember her always there. Um, ever the first time I ever had cantaloupe. <laughs> and I was at her place. Mm -hmm. I told her I'd never had it before. And she said, oh, well, then you're going to enjoy it. Yes. And I certainly did. She put vanilla ice cream and a half of a cantaloupe. Yep. And uh, uh, always lots of fun memories in the summer, staying in there at Oakwood Avenue hmm. with she and Aunt Betty. And Alan would be around sometimes. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, uh, before he moved to Ottawa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember somebody named Percy that lived downstairs at one point. Was that just a... Perhaps yep. uh, somebody in another apartment. Mm, yes, Jessie lived on the main floor. Her okay. sister. Yes. And Isabel Wood. Right. Her sister-in-law, uh, Doctor Wood, was her brother. Right, James. James. Yeah, they lived near. Doctor Jim, as they called him. Yes, yeah. they lived mm -hmm. nearby, and we always would go over, take a cab, and go and see them, mm -hmm. and go and see uh, Grace and John. Mm -hmm. And you remember Doctor Wood. Mm -hmm. He used to come out to Danforth Road. Mm -hmm. He'd drop out and see mm -hmm. us as a kids. Do you mm -hmm. remember anything about that? Not too much, Craig. No, oh, well, my mom used I'm to tell sorry, me that got, that's he would drop out and, and see, uh, see yeah. us. Very as famous kids. surgeon. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Very yeah, accomplished. Yeah. Yeah. And again, the big thing I remember about all of them, always so happy to see you. Yeah. And always chit-chatting steadily back and forth yep. in a very happy mm -hmm. way. They were yep. very up people. Never mm -hmm. lacking in conversation. Not at all. Yes. No. And it was good conversation. Yes. yes. Um, as far as uh, memories of different of the siblings, uh, you would have been uh, spending more time with uh, uh, the Jollofs, perhaps, because of being in the East End. Which ones did you spend the most I time with? I didn't really see the other people that much at that time. Sure. Um, they were all busy. Eventually, Jean and Charlie, um, am I getting it right? No, Jean and Charlie lived in Pickering, and Charlie taught art at the high school where we all went yeah. to school. Um, well, see, You're I thinking had, about James Zane. I had a terrible time, there. James Zane and, and uh, Mary. Mary. Yes. Yep. Um, they eventually moved into Gravenhurst, where mm -hmm. we were finally living. Right. And uh, we had the 19 acres, and, you know, Sort of engraving hers. Yeah. And uh, oh, so we got to get, know them at the end. Sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, did you spend much time with any of the other siblings along the way, or were no? Just because so they were way ever, north end of Toronto. Sure. And we were way out in the country. Right. Were there family occasions that everyone would get together? Occasionally. During? Okay. Would they have been Christmas time or yeah, other? Right. Yeah. Any memories of those Christmas meals? Oh, it's very meals? nice. Always very nice. Their family were just terrific. Yeah. And, and would those have been at Granny Cowan's uh, uh, home? That's right. Okay. So and, uh, uh, that's one of the ones we have pictures of, of, mm -hmm. of that special occasions. And some of, for instance, Don got married and moved down to uh, um, 
They went out west first of all and then to Oregon. Mm -hmm. Oregon's word I'm trying mm -hmm. to remember. Sure. And uh, he, I think he had a, did he have a stroke or something? He had something happen. He was After married. After he retired, yes. Yeah. And he used to phone me a lot from yes. Oregon. One of my great uh, memories was always on any birthday, anniversary or other occasion, you You'd knew that sooner or later Don. during that day, Uncle, Uncle Don from Oregon, as we called him, yes, would right. make a phone call and give you the greeting. Sometimes he would sing a song, a birthday song or something else. It was a delight. He helped us to remember our anniversaries. Yes. <laughs> we were off say, oh, my, that's say, great. Oh, I would better get out and get that card. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they Don. did come out uh, when we had a, an apple orchard also. In okay. And uh, Don, before he moved out west, and, and Stuart and... Uh, uh, John and Grace mm -hmm. and uh, and the boys, Murray and little John sure. and Betty used to all come out and they sometimes would come out during the summer for mm -hmm. apples. And That's then it was quite a sad day when Don, I remember he, the whole family came out and Don told us he was going to be moving out west. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I... I remember that because yeah. all of us felt that that was Was he married moment. at that point? Or no, this was... he met Diane out west. Mm -hmm. So a good thing for the family when he met her. Yes. Yeah, very good, but we lost him as far as being close. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you know the story with Stuart, that I used to go into my grandmother's every summer and stay there. She used to have me go in for uh, a couple of weeks. And uh, Stuart would come and take me out. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't married at that time. Mm -hmm. and, and Stuart was great. Yes, he yeah. was. And we went shopping and he bought some little teaspoons. And I said, oh, those are for Nana. And he said, well, no, they're not for Nana. But I knew enough not to ask any more questions. Sure. But I came home and I said to Nana and Betty, Stuart bought some spoons. Yeah. Well, then I started getting the third degree, but because they were so fascinated, because they were suspicious that perhaps there was a significant other that Stuart was seeing, mm. but he hadn't mentioned anything at this point. And sure enough, not too long after that, we all got to know Joan. Now, with the, the Cowan family, uh, there are traits that you can see that were kind of similar. What, how would you describe each of the uncles or aunts in terms of things that stand out uh, from your memory? What, what, what would be a word or two that you'd say that remind you of Annie Grace? Uh, I don't know. Anything come to mind? What about you, Peggy? When you think of Annie Grace? Always rascally. Yes. Twinkle in the eye. Yeah. Uh -huh. Very, very correct. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Quite proper. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, in a rascally sort of way. Yes. Um, and there was always the box of chocolates that was being passed around and mm -hmm. everyone and taking one and smiling, sure. happy when they were together. Yeah. They enjoyed being together. Very mm -hmm. good. And uh, what about Aunt Betty? What are your memories of Aunt Betty? Any memories come, up, come back for Aunt, Aunt Betty? Betty? Do you remember it? I remember Aunt Betty, but after we got married and moved out right to uh, Pickering, we didn't see them nearly as much as I had before. Sure. But they were all wonderful. Yes. They were great sisters-in-law. Yeah. Memories of Aunt Betty for you, Peggy? Yes, when I used to go in and stay at, at Nana's, then Betty sure. was always there as yeah. well. This one, Oakwood? Yes. Yeah. yeah. All the stairs going upstairs. That <laughs> yes. probably doesn't mean too much to you, but yeah. to me it was on the third floor, and it seemed like we were forever climbing until we got to the top. Yes. And uh, um, she was very interested in what we were studying at school since she was a teacher. Sure. Uh, but again, very lighthearted yeah. and friendly. And, and, uh, <coughs> and when we would visit, we had no idea that this painting that she often had in her home uh, over the couch, uh, which was the painting called Goodbye to a Teacher, mm -hmm. uh, was actually by David Milne, the famous Canadian mm -hmm. painter who had painted her and her class back in her days teaching at the Big Shoot yes. uh, School. Wonderful. And which, of course, now is donated to the uh, McMichael Collection in oh, Kleinberg. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, all these little stories that. within the stories that you find with many of these uh, Cowan characters mm -hmm. uh, within that. But as a teacher, she loved uh, learning and loved keeping mm -hmm. track mm -hmm. of how people were doing in school. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember at Granny Cowan at Oakwood, one of the things we would do as little boys is uh, she would play a game where, we, who's that knocking at my door? <laughs> and we would uh, go outside the wooden door and uh, we would knock on it and she would sing the song, who's that knocking at my door, who's that knocking at my door? And we were to sing the, the uh, response, which was, it's only me from over the sea, Barnacle Bill the sailor. <laughs> and, then we, and then we could go in. And uh, some of the things that she always had that very odd uh, brass uh, right. fly that they put candies in sometimes. That was a great thing for little boys. Another uh, thing was they had uh, this figure that was, I think, an, an old uh, 
decanter or bottle uh -huh. uh, of this old man standing as a um, keeper uh, that was a lamplighter, I guess, in, in England. Uh, and he was called All's Well because she would say 9 o'clock and All's Well, <laughs> 10 o'clock and All's Well. So we referred to him as a boy when we were kids as All's Well. Uh, but Aunt Betty and, and that was a, always a fun thing for mm -hmm. little boys from, Toronto, from Windsor to come up to Toronto and to see the activity at St. Clair yeah. and uh, the streetcars and all the things that were, were part of that. And if we were especially good, they would give us a little note that said we could have popcorn. Oh, nice. And we'd go out onto the corner and they'd give us one of the popcorn vendors would have chestnuts and popcorn mm -hmm. and uh, we could get a little bag of popcorn Very uh, nice. for that. But a lot of memories at Oakwood. Oh. Do you have any memories of Uncle John? Yes, no. and I, I think my mom is just part of it that she's forgotten because sure. we did see them quite often and uh, always a huge smile, yes. as I remember. And a real John. man's man too, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And a, a wonderful laugh and very interested in everything that was going on around him. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, Grace used to sort of uh, tease and, and say rascally things and John would laugh and they always seemed very, very happy. Yeah. Um, and every single time I saw him, he was <laughs> just one happy person. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, do, would you have known about Percy Williams when you were growing up with uh, the big sprinter from no. 1928 in the Olympics? Uncle John was in that Olympics. Yes. In 1928, and mm -hmm. was no, a, I didn't know. a champion. At least I don't remember. Yes. Yep, the, the Commonwealth uh, Games, as they were then the Empire Games, the mm -hmm. British Empire. He was very mm -hmm. accomplished as a runner, and then was in, I guess, the forerunners of the Hamilton Tiger Cats for a while, mm -hmm. as a football player. Mm -hmm. uh, when you would meet him, did uh, you did they tell you any of these stories, or was it something you heard from others? Heard from others. John never talked much about. Uh, being in the uh, Olympics or anything. Yeah. No, um, John, I don't remember John ever mentioning it. Yeah. But I remember them talking a little. Alec Monroe, which is my with Nana's sure? sister's son, mm -hmm. uh, was also involved in that a great deal. And okay. so when they would get together, Alec and uh, we always called him Big John because of his son Little sure. John. I yes, can't help but call right. him Big John still. Yeah. They would talk a little bit about it. Mm -hmm. And my dad, he, he did the walking, the fast walking. That okay. Thing. Mm -hmm. And they were quite involved in, I don't know where they got together to practice all of this. Mm -hmm. Do you remember anything about them? Mm, not really. Daddy had some medals as well yeah. from mm -hmm. the walking. Interesting. So speed walking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Uh, right. And, and yes, he, he liked doing that. Uh, oh, memories yeah. of uh, Uncle Charlie and Aunt Jean Jolliffe? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, of course, with Charlie, all the kids in my class called him Uncle Charlie. Yes. <laughs> I and the, the, school, the school, again, just for the record? It was Pickering High School. Pickering, yep. And uh, um, we used to go to their place in Pickering. Jean was a fabulous cook. Mm -hmm. And uh, with Ricky and Lonnie. I saw Charlie more than Jean in school because in the period when they were there in Pickering and we were in West Rouge, um, None of us traveled as much mm -hmm. in those days um, to leave Pickering if we weren't driving. And my dad had a Jeep at that time because he just used the Jeep to get to John's mm -hmm. Mambo, mm -hmm. which was just a mile or so away. But it's not something you would hop into and drive down to Pickering. Mm -hmm. And we took the Great Coach bus if we were traveling down to town to see Nana or whatever. So we didn't get together as often uh, other than at Christmas times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we would have on Boxing Day, we'd get together for our big mm -hmm. feast. Mm -hmm. oh, that's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And about your dad, uh, Uncle Ken, how, what yes. year would he have passed away? The, oh, you mean, oh, you don't know when no, my exactly. grandfather, my mom's yeah, dad, when he passed both away? Both would be good, yeah. Yes, well, he, again, he was in his 80s. Okay. And I would be married by that time. Oh, yeah, very much so. I wouldn't so. be friends with I was in that's high right. school when my grandfather sure. died. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then my dad was in his 80s too, but, you know, was, with his Alzheimer's, he, he lived with the Alzheimer's longer, I think, than a lot of people do mm -hmm. comfortably because he can still speak. He didn't lose okay. that. Yep. And he remembered everything back from when he was in school and okay. could sit and chat sure. with you clearly about all of this. Yep. Plus, in the end, I got a very comfortable chair, put it in the corner there, yeah. and opened the door so he could look out the storm door, the glass door. Right. And I sat on the couch here in with him because he didn't like being alone. Sure. But he didn't want to talk, he just wanted me there. Yeah. So I wrote poetry. Very nice. So did, <laughs> did you like writing poetry through your life? 
I had never thought about it before. So you started writing poetry. Yeah. Isn't that great? And uh, there now have been three or two or three companies from the state who wanted to print it, but I publish it. But I would I want it published in Canada. And all those years ago, and I haven't bothered about doing anything. Yeah. So you have a collection of poems you wrote. Yeah, a whole pile. Yeah. What types of topics did you write about? Do you remember? The sun. Okay. He eventually had to go into a nursing home, mm -hmm. and we brought him back at Christmas time. He was here, and he was sitting in the chair. And my mom said to him, "Ken, do you know where you are?" And he said, "Yes." And all conversation stopped in the room, and everyone looked at him. And she said, "Where are you?" And he said, "Right here." <laughs> and I thought, "That was typical." Got it. That's right. Got right. it. Still have it. Got it in one. That's right. <laughs> that was typical. Mm -hmm. You've always made a study of uh, faith and religion. This has been mm -hmm, important right. to you as well. Right. Mm -hmm. I had the holy books of all the great religions. Yes. And then I heard about the Baha'i faith. Yes. And uh, I was uh, in a building downtown in Toronto. And I was there doing for something else. And I heard them talking about Baha'i faith. Yeah. And I thought, I've got to hear about this. I had never heard of Baha'i before. Mm -hmm. I went in and I thought, this is terrific. Mm -hmm. And I said to them, I want to become a Baha'i. And they said, you can't do it. No, beginning, you couldn't do it that way. Sure. You had to know exactly what you were doing. So they sent someone out twice a week to talk to me about the Baha'i faith. Sure. And I said, I'm agreeing with everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, you see, it means the uniting of all. Along came Moses and gave sure. laws that were yeah. terrific. Christ taught love, yeah. terrific. You know, it, it's unifying all these. Mm -hmm. And I accept the laws of, I had three Bibles, they're all messed up. Yeah. I used to read them all the time. I can't see to read anymore. Sure. But I used to read them all the time. Yeah. And yeah. they were great. I had to laugh. Um, someone wanted my poetry. And uh, so my mother took it. Uh, they wanted to put it on radio. And she took a bunch of but the kind of ones I would never choose. Uh -huh. And uh, she thought people would like to sit on the streetcar and read them, but they were not the ones I. So read. you must have written uh, quite a bit of poetry in your yeah. younger years too. No, it no, was just it was... when I was looking after Ken. Okay. I did it all at that time, and I haven't done it since. Yeah. So you're saying she uh, was somebody that did some writing of short stories? Yes, you, you always like to write. I remember. Yeah. Well, and, I used to uh, tell you kids short stories. Oh yes instead of reading stories mm -hmm. to us when we were little. She mm -hmm. used to make up her own, uh -huh. and uh, which was always a lot of fun. Sure. We used to always after her for a new story. Did she have some main characters that she would repeat, or was it uh, different each time? Uh, the next one I remember was the, the dragon that um, uh, heated up the little kid's peanut butter sandwich. And wow. So we always wanted our wow. to be there after. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> but other than that, I was fairly young. You know, sure. When I got to be older, I, I, I grew up beyond yeah, having the story. I don't remember a thing about this, yeah. but anyway. That's great. I picked out one called Moon Paths. I know you probably uh, don't remember it right now, but I paddle the moon be moonbeam a pathway of silver that dances and shimmers across the dark lake. My paddle dips softly, making droplets that glimmer and silvery bars that drift off in my wake. I'm alone in a strange world of mystery and silence, with pale stars above me that twinkle and shine. Dark trees left behind me huddle shoulder to shoulder and whisper their gossip along the shoreline. The moon path entices, seducing my paddle. It beckons me follow wherever it takes. I'm bewitched by the moonlight that enfolds me with magic when the pale goddess moon spreads her path on the lake. Mm. Oh my goodness. That's Christ. awesome. I used that to like awesome. uh, and another one canoe. that's kind of fun, and I always like this crazy wishes. Because <laughs> I think we've all felt this way a little sure. bit different times. Lately, I've been hanging around with a bunch of crazy wishes. Come on, they say, let's get away. Stop washing those boring dishes. Stop making meals and sweeping the floor. Let's go outside. There's so much to explore. Hear that jet riding the morning sky? It's time to go, and it's time to fly. Take off for countries you've never seen and visit places where you've never been. I know I agree with those crazy wishes, but right now, 
I better wash these dishes. Isn't that fabulous? <laughs> wow. And there's a collection here. Yes. Oh, there's yep. a pile. Wow. Now, so it needs to be published. Well, that's, I've had people phoning me from the States wanting to publish. I sent them to a, a publisher a long time ago in New York, mm -hmm. and they were going to publish them. And then I thought, no, I should get a Canadian publisher. So I said, don't publish them. Okay. Uh, I want to get a Canadian publisher. Well, I couldn't get a Canadian publisher. I mean, I didn't find a Canadian publisher. Yeah. Well, we um, live in an age of self-publishing now. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's something to get published here. Yeah, could be. Those are beautiful poems. Do you think uh, that's an idea? Yeah. Well, because a lot of people are after me for... Uh, yeah. Well, because I wrote these long years ago. Ken died in 1990. Sure. And it was long before 1990, yeah. and I haven't been writing since, yeah. but I've got a pile. Yeah, those are delightful. Thank you. Yeah. And well, it was something to do when I was sitting here with Ken. When he was sitting looking out the window, he wanted me in the room, and I had to have something to do. Wow. Isn't that great? <laughs> yeah, they, sh they couldn't get out very much then when they right. had the Alzheimer's. So. Yeah. So, Anne Francis, you're coming up to 100, 100 years lived. Yeah, 99. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts? Next year to, will be a hundred. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts to share with 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 the, the younger generations uh, about life that you would like to people to know? I think that um, gradually the world is changing quite a bit. I hope that the world becomes more international. Yes. Um, I hope that, uh, you know, we're getting to know, well, look at China. We're very involved with China. Mm -hmm. I hope that eventually, it won't be easy and it won't be soon, that the world will become like a big family. Mm. The English has recently been made an international language, and that'll be a big help. Because if you can talk to people, you know, there isn't the same... Re a strained relationship, mm -hmm. and uh, you get to be friends sometimes. Yes, very good. Sometimes you end up the other way, but you frequently be friends. Uh, what would you say about the importance of family as somebody that's lived so long? Uh, why is family important? As far as I'm concerned, the whole world is my family. Mm -hmm. I think families are important, and I think everybody, a lot of my friends are like my family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's and uh, I think everybody's important. Mm -hmm. A lot of my friends in Gravenhurst are gone. And they were younger than me. But anyway... They didn't live right. No, they didn't live to be 99. <laughs> um, and some of my um, very good friends got moved away. And uh, they keep in touch, but not like we used to. But my and, mom used to all tell ch little children that she was a hundred years old and a witch. <laughs> and we said, <laughs> now you can still do it to the little children, but other, not the witch, but it will be a hundred years old. That's I right. don't do that anymore. No. Yeah. I don't see it's getting too close to the hundred. I don't yeah. see the kids very much.